So welcome guys, welcome to the broad podcast. And with today we have somebody really special who has many feathers in his hat. So let me introduce you to Yashraj. So he is a GSOC 2021 student with the CDLI organization. Now he is a GSOC mentor with the very same organization, and he is also an LFX mentee 20 year 2022 with the Hyper Ledger Foundation. So welcome, Vishal. Welcome to the podcast, and you know, thank you for doing this with us and giving us your valuable time. Would you like to introduce yourself and your community a bit more? Sure, Vyom. So most of the things you covered it. That was a very nice introduction. Thank you. So as you covered, like I was GSOC contributor last year in 2021. Then I worked at a startup uh, which was an early stage startup as a back end developer. And uh, currently, I am selected for the LFX mentee program, and also I am mentoring students for GSOC. So yeah, looking forward to this conversation. So yeah, it must feel really great, like, like working with an organization, then being a mentor. So you know that area, like once you were a yeah. student, now you are mentoring students. So it must feel really great. So like, what experience do you had? You know, initially you were a mentor, uh, and sorry, a contributor, and now you are a mentor. So like you saw the transition in yourself, and you know you were yeah. mentoring students. So what was the transition that you know felt in yourself, and you will be looking at students this year? Sure. So I would like to start the story from when I was a GSOC contributor. So I like the first time I heard about open source was an Hacktober Fest event. You might be aware of it. It's an event where you make four pull requests, and if your four pull requests are accepted, then you get a T-shirt. So the main motive was getting a T-shirt, because you know initially you are not aware about uh, what open source is all about and that stuff like that. So that was my main motive. And once I uh, got the T-shirt and I was very happy. And after that, I I heard about like there is some program called GSOC. So okay. I thought okay let's give a try. It was in my second year. So it was around uh, November December. So Hacktober Fest is in October and. Yeah. After that, in November or December, I thought, okay, let's give GSOC a try. So I, like every student does, I went on to the GSOC uh, program Thanks. and hunted for organization. So initially, what happened was I went through all the organizations and just saw their tech stack and their code base, and I was just overwhelmed by it. And yeah. at that time, I thought that okay, it's not uh, my cup of tea, and okay, let's give up on it. And I actually gave up at that point and thought that okay, oh, this is not my cup of tea. <laughs> Then fast forward to March, so the organizations were announced at this time, and then I thought okay, I had this dream of doing GSOC, but now I know I am late. But let's give a try. Like, what would be a worst case? I'll get rejected. But the yep. points which were the upwards were first of all, I'll get to know how a proposal is made and. how open source organizations work and so the positive points were much more than the negative ones actually there weren't uh, there weren't no up down downsides mm-hmm. so i thought okay let's give a try then i went to the organizations i found a organization called cdli so i found one of their projects very interesting it was related to search so we'll discuss it okay. about in the later stage and uh, luckily i got a mentor which was my college alumni so it was oh. easy for me to contact to him so yeah. i messaged him on linkedin and got in touch with him and then he briefed me about uh, what the organization is all about and what the project is all about and once the organizations were announced i started to contribute after that so oh. it was pretty late i wouldn't recommend it to the viewers but you yeah know, it's pretty not... late but then you can again learn like even if you yeah. are late then you can just give it a try you know you miss yes, all the there's no harm in trying yeah. yeah exactly so i tried yeah. and uh, fun fact is the project which we uh, the project which i was going to uh, write the proposal for okay. so i did not know anything about it like i the tech stack was elastic search and php okay. but i had knowledge of javascript and uh, web development but that helped me in the project eventually so it's it isn't like you should be a pro coder or something like that yeah, to exactly. exact this work you can learn on the go and uh, that is the best way i feel so learning by doing i mean so, that's a yeah yeah go on go on yeah, sorry yeah. interrupted yeah no nah, go on yes sir go on yeah sure so yeah after that uh, 
fortunately i contributed after that and i got selected and uh, then it's never looking back then once i got selected i did jsoc successfully then uh, continued to contribute to the organization and uh, if you are a regular contributor the uh, organizations yeah. they offer you the role of mentor yeah it's like exactly. uh, will you mentor us yeah, mentor yeah, exactly exactly so uh, yeah it was just giving back to the community so i accepted the offer and now i'm mentoring students so yeah, i mean was, like uh, it's really a bold step from your side like you were in javascript and web development and yeah. then you had to you know you did not know anything about php in elastic search and yes. then you transitioned into that so that's a really yeah. courageous step i'll say that like when i started contributing in my organization like java was the prerequisite so i knew java so like i had idea that what i was doing in the organization and yeah. uh, you know my organization is such an organization in which if you don't have any prior experience you know solving you know issues in the organization then most probably your chances are near equal to zero of getting selected so okay. like it's really a bold step like shifting yeah, uh, technical yeah. you know tech stacks like that you know yeah. but the thing that. is uh if you have basic concept you your basic concepts are clear like yeah. at the end of the day what you are doing is web development logical so, yeah. yeah so if your basic concept are clear you can catch up any language or any framework very quickly exactly, exactly. so yeah that helps. yeah i mean that's really good so like one more question like i like to ask you right now like mm -hmm. it's been a while since you have been into open source like you have contributed to gsoc then being a mentor now even an, as an lfx mentee under hyperledger so like what how would you define g you know open source to a you know beginner like what would be your definition of open source like so there's well, something connection yep see the formal definition of open source okay let's make it uh, easy for beginners you know python yeah. uh, everybody writes code in python so just imagine for every time you compile the code you are charged something mm. so do you ever think that our technology and the technologies which are used today would they have been at this level i think it was it couldn't have been possible because for obvious reasons yeah. so open source is something which empowers this it helps you it uh, coders from all around the world come and contribute to the project which they are interested in and this in turn helps the entire community to use these open source products and as as a result make uh, people's life easier so in layman terms we can define it as this when it comes to students so for students open source can be like gold because the thing is it's like giving you experience like you are directly working on industry level projects exactly and you here you do not have to give any interview there is no resume shortlisting and stuff like that so it's gold for us you can just go and contribute and uh, you know gain experience in the skill set so yeah these are different perspectives and i feel students should give a try to open source because as i mentioned the reasons and the thing is it doesn't matter if you are from tier 1 or tier 3 college because exactly. they do not look about that so if you want to do an internship and if there aren't inter any internships coming to your college open source is a way just go and uh, contribute to open source it is equivalent to any internship yeah exactly exactly like i am myself i am you know i consider my college as a tier 3 college uh, but my college doesn't look at look at it that way they consider themselves as a tier 2 college but it's actually a yeah, tier 3 yeah. college it's story of every college <laughs> yeah it's story of every college that they consider yeah. themselves on the next level but yeah. really open source like i can feel myself as a programmer the difference that i feel you know myself in viewing code like now if i scroll through any code like it's so easy for me to see what's happening and what could happen compared to you know when i started coding and i was just watching tutorials online and you know doing read exactly. questions and stuff like that so development and that to open source really gives you a new perspective of how things work and you know like in uh, read code you know solving problems on your own or learning a tech stack so that does not give you a really you know production like feeling because in production you have ci cd you have you know test yeah. test cases to run you know unit testing and all that stuff and you know yeah. learning any language or solving any need code problems or doing no complete coding is good don't get me wrong but yeah. you know the perspective that you get as a programmer how to view at the large code base with ease like uh, initially my code base used to scare me 
but now it's like oh i know what's in there like what every file contains what is probably the bug like if a bugs coming in uh, bugs coming to you know the mailing list now we can you know see that what might be the problem which uh, unlike the case that it was you know one and a half years uh, earlier like we were completely baffled oh what is this so it really gives us a new perspective like how to solve problems how to approach problems and as a developer i said that we all you know we feel better after you know working in open source so it's really goal for students i'll say that and yeah, coming which idea. brings yeah which brings on to you know me on to my next questions so like uh, your contributors so we are this podcast so we are aiming to you know make it a uh, organization specific so like what tips you know would you give to you know newcomers to your organization cdli you know to really uh, gel in well and uh, how did you contact the mentors like you uh, right now only told that you contacted your alumni through linkedin but uh, you know everybody doesn't have an alumni yeah. uh, or cdli in their college sure, sure. so like how would you you know tell the newcomers to contact mentors and not to get you know disheartened if they are facing a lot of errors so what is your take on this so is it fine if i share my screen now yeah absolutely fine absolutely fine okay so can you see my screen uh, not yet but let's you know I'll give it a few seconds okay okay just a second. Yeah, can you see it now? It's completely visible now. All right. So your starting point would obviously be the GSOC uh, main website. Okay. So here you can get uh, everything about the GSOC and the projects. So I'll just show my project. So as we are talking about CDLI, so let's directly go to CDLI. There are different organizations where you you know you can go and see what is the tech stack and what are the technologies they are working on so as this is aimed at cdli let's go to all right yeah we go. so let's first understand uh, what is the organization and what's it, what it's doing so curating humanity's oldest written sources so i think this is self sufficient so mm-hmm. as the name suggests cuneiform digital library initiative so it is a digital library of different artifacts which date which goes around like 1000 years ago so these are different artifacts uh, we have the digital library of it so any researchers or assyrologist who are interested to see what the artifacts are and do research on it so they can easily go on this website and uh, they can uh, look at the i'll show you the website just a second mm-hmm. okay so i think okay this is the older version uh, we are currently working on the new version but here mm-hmm. from here you can get the understanding like yeah uh, like this. how it basically works yeah yeah so here you can see it is just an artifact and uh, the researchers can do research on stuff like that so we have text stack uh, we have variety of text stack like mysql javascript docker php and scss and we also have elastic search so my project was based on elastic search so this was about it so okay so how you should contribute so first of all you should go to the ideas list from here you will get to know what are the ideas which were selected for gsoc this year and even the ideas which were selected previous year so here you can get all the details regarding it so these are the different projects so every project will have the mentors the what are the requirements in the proposal the skills required for that the materials which you can follow mm-hmm. so these are the things which you should look for and you can look like okay what is this project about so i'll go to my project okay yeah so search enhancement so the difficulty rating is medium so this was the project and so this was basically a 
uh, enhancement to the search project which was done at last year so last year i built some search features we this year we wanted to add some search features to the framework so okay this was the project from here you will get to know what the project uh, projects requirements are all about then these are the objectives which were uh, you know which are expected to be solved in the gsoc so you can have a look by so there are the links issues link you can go over there and have a look what the issue is all about and uh, yeah the skills required are here so from here you can get the idea okay what the project is all about once you go through it then there is a page where you can contact uh, you will get the slack link of the yes. uh, organization community. community so yeah you can see to join the community you can visit here so once you visit here i think a form will open yeah so once you fill the form you will get a invite from the slack channel so this is the way you can you know enter our slack channel and ask your questions so yeah, this is the slack channel and here well first you want to obviously you will want to uh, set up the framework locally so yes. there is a channel for framework, framework installed. installed yeah so here you can ask your queries regarding uh, the setting up the framework so people have asked here about that and then each project has uh, you know their different channels so for example my project was related to search, search. so yeah you can see it, like there is a search club over here so each project has their different channels so you can go to those channels and ask your queries and yeah i think and to set up the project i'll go to the link so yeah we have our project on gitlab so okay. it is very similar to github but no need to yeah. get by it so here you can see the yeah so for local development setup so you should go to framework install here you will get all the details regarding how you can set up the project so yeah for windows yeah, no. and installation on linux so linux. you can go through it yeah i mean it's pretty detailed like what you need to do yeah yeah and well documented that's the beauty of open source projects yeah every organization has this i mean you do not yeah. have to go and uh, reinvent yeah. on you yeah like, reinvent the wheel yes yeah yeah so every project will have their uh, local development setup where you can go and just follow the documentation and again if you face any errors the slack channel is always there yeah slack channel yeah. is always there so uh, like when you are you going so what well, you are yeah, saying something that's pretty much about it okay so like when you started contributing like mm -hmm. had you contributed before gsoc also like or it was after gsoc that you started contribution uh, no no i had contributions before gsoc okay okay, okay. yeah so so like, like for gsoc uh, it's very important that you have some contribution because yeah, exactly. that acts as a proof of work okay that this guy can you know code and has the capabilities of completing the pro completing the project mm -hmm. That's very important. So, like, what difficulties you had, you know, when you were just beginning out with, with the organization, like when you were just, you solved the first issue, you made a first pull request. So, I mean, yeah, it yeah. must have been a you know massacre with all red signs, or you were you know all without or without greens. Yeah. Was it reds so, or greens? See, the first pull request, I fondly remember it. It was just like changing a single line of code. I mean, it was just like that because and the first pull request is always like that i mean you need not uh, change the entire architecture of the code base and like that just to get started to get okay how things are working the first pull request i remember was just changing a single line of code it was related to a front end thing so yeah that was my first pull request and simultaneously i was uh, learning the technology stack as well as i said i yeah, didn't have any idea about it, so i was simultaneously learning and so you get to know that okay how these uh, organizations are working and it's really uh, you know best place to learn by doing so open source is the best way to exactly, go exactly exactly so now this brings on us to our next question so uh, you are a mentor right now and uh, so did you review some proposals this year 
like yeah, yeah. were you in that yeah so yeah, i mean so oh yeah that's it exactly <laughs> so so like you have sent a proposal earlier and now you're reviewing them so like what do you expect in a proposal and what's the you know ratio of contributions versus proposal like so if somebody a newcomer he has you know little less number of contributions to the code base actually but his proposal mm-hmm. is you know like how many slots do you get on average every year from so it's about uh, 7 to 8 this year i got i think we got 10 so yeah that's free and we only get two so uh, it's little yeah. stuff out here but uh, anyhow so like what's the ratio you know how what's the you know golden ratio that you look for in contributions and in in the you know the proposal so like if somebody has a proposal on a weaker end and the contribution ratio is fine so like what's the basic criteria to judge a you know candidate well these two things go hand in hand so your proposal shows like how much clarity you have about the project and how much the project you have understood and these all are things which we can judge from a proposal and the contribution act as a proof of work okay so the candidate is really capable of doing these things so both go hand in hand so look if you have contributions that is great i mean if you have more number of contributions the more your your chances the of chances, getting selected yeah. but don't think that okay my contributions are less so uh i shouldn't apply to gsoc so that would be i mean take chance you never know there is no harm in trying right yeah yeah so it's not like a perfect ratio or something like that it depends like some projects uh they are like uh, it are it becomes very difficult for beginners to contribute to the project so at that time even if you have like one or two pull requests regarding it but your proposal is like gold and it if it covers all the edge cases then mm-hmm. you might get even selected in that case some projects like some like uh, related to front end or something like that so these projects we expect that okay there should be a considerable amount of pull request as these aren't that difficult so in that case pull request also uh, play an important role yes, so it depends so like was cd cdi like the only organization you had shortlisted or they were you know uh, one or two more organizations like uh, a normal like somebody would you know keep something for backup in case uh, you contributed start contributed after organization announced yeah. or announced right in 10 days you can only target one organization oh well, yeah exactly exactly <laughs> like, so well, like it's a pretty big a pretty big achievement like you can't you started contributing 10 days earlier to the organization and then oh you are in gsoc So yeah, yeah. it must so have been great, yeah. Yeah, man. it's an uh, example for all the viewers. Like even yeah, if you're that made, you can. It's never too late, and, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's never too late. Mm-hmm. So the next question that I'd like to ask is that GSOC, in especially in India, has the reputation of being highly competitive. So like people apply for GSOC and you know they only go for the GSOCer badge. Like I'll be a GSOCer, I'll get the stipend. After that, they evaporate. like they do not you know bother to solve the remaining issues in their project and they just complete it for the name sake of completion and they you know really don't indulge with the organization so like what would you say to the newcomers like i personally believe that collaborate okay gsoc is good but there are a lot of more open source projects and you should go with a collaborative mindset so what's your take on this exactly a great point raised by you so see when you do a project you know i feel like i can talk about myself i feel that i am responsible for that project so mm-hmm. i have contributed that project so that project should su- should sustain and i should be the one who should manage that project so that feeling that feeling comes from inside for me so mm-hmm. it should be like that for everyone because you know open source it's very important as i said exactly. if you are being if you are charged for every time you compile your python yeah, code python code uh, i mean you are doomed just imagine how it will be so yeah. never just go for the gsoc tag yeah gsoc tag will help you in future yeah, but future. stay with your organizations and in the process you will also learn different things mm-hmm. so just stay with your organization and it's not like that you have to contribute actively you can mm-hmm. even uh, help you come guide your mentors you. and yeah so 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 i've seen you know like examples of people like working open source and they get employed in open source too if they are you know yeah. working with the organization like somebody is working with kubernetes suppose yeah, they yeah. you know got in the release team once or twice then it's highly likely that if they had you know the certain qualifications 
that the company yeah. would hire them so like people run after you know for only for money then they evaporate you know they are not seen in the organization again so like all the newcomers out there keep you know contributing because open source is such a great thing that you might not even need to sit in the campus placements you know prepare for dsa or do all that stuff the, they will directly hire you based on your experience and how much work you have done so that's the real beauty of open source i believe yeah yeah for example yeah. there is a organization called chromium all right so yeah, yeah, exactly. the mentors of these organizations are software developers in google mm -hmm. so if you contribute to that organization that's and right. you know uh, show your proof of work then getting into then you get you get reference and you are into yeah, yeah. the next thing yeah so it works like that yeah it's worked like a charm exactly yeah, so yeah. it's really perfect so now let's you know uh, shift from gsoc perspective a bit to fx menti we don't want to you know completely go on to that because this was something gsoc and cdi uh, li oriented but how has been lfx menti been like it's such a great program and working in hyper ledger blockchain so yeah, how has yeah, it man. been it was kind of a dream come true because hyperledger is one of the leading uh, yeah. you know the developers in blockchain mm -hmm. so lfx is also very similar to gsoc like there are open source organizations so these organizations under are under the lfx umbrella so the yeah. lfx foundation so mm -hmm. it if you want i can show you the mentor yeah. the organization go on, go on, go on. just a second mm -hmm. and it works like around so there are three terms it goes all around the year so yeah. the first is fall term i guess then summer and the spring and then yeah so So I add to the screen, and your screen is visible now to the viewers. All right. So just like GSOC, here also you have different projects which you can see of different organizations like CNCF, Open Mainframe Project, and mm -hmm. these. So these are the organizations which are currently accepting the proposals. So mm -hmm. I mean, there were many projects before because the term summer term starts from June. So. Mm -hmm now like many of the applications have closed yeah so these are the ones which are still remaining so mm -hmm. it's just similar to gsoc you you can go to the let you know the fx menti page so there you go you get to know okay what all are the requirements of the project mm -hmm. and uh, the repos you can view the repository or you can view the site mm -hmm. what you can get to know who are the mentors and mm. uh, if you want to apply you can go and apply over here so for lfx all right okay i have been accepted so it's uh, not uh, so for lfx it's like i think you can only apply to uh, three organizations at a for a term yeah and then they generally ask your resume and cover letter uh, mm. unlike gsoc which they ask like the proposal yeah. here it's uh they asked resume and cover letter and the judging i think evaluating is mostly done on that only uh, okay. your resume and cover letter so if you have the relevant experience which was required for the project then mm -hmm. you have you have high chances of getting selected it's for the elephant because in my case like i hadn't contributed to that hyperledger organization before yeah. getting selected so they only judged me on the basis of uh, my resume and cover letter and not only on that so just a second i'll show you my tasks which were assigned mm -hmm. so this was the project which was uh, which i had applied mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so first they asked me to submit the resume and the cover letter so mm -hmm. they had mentioned the points which are required so how do you find about the mentorship and stuff like that and after that i guess they shortlisted some students so they assigned me an extra task to help us choose the best candidate so you can see here like they found some candidates and 
they asked me to submit a video of a project which was relevant to the tech stack of the lfx project so okay. any of my personal project i was asked to submit a video okay and then i submitted the video and uh, within i guess uh, a week i got uh, acceptance from the project okay. so, so like uh, uh... <laughs> like this could be a personal yeah. question but like i also applied uh, for the lfx 20 like mm-hmm. what's the you know approximate period in with the mentors apply or you get some response because this time there was a bug on the platform so you yeah. cannot apply it directly to the site you need to you know mm-hmm. uh, apply through mail this time so like what was you know your experience like how uh, time how in how much time did you get the response like uh, when did you start because there is a rule in lfx i believe that they state that you do not have to be a mentor contributed to the or committed to the organization to apply to mm. that organization so like you yes. cannot contribute p- previously because yeah, yeah. i mean that would give you an upper hand over the other candidates so yeah. there's a rule that i think that is so like when did you you know apply and how was the process of you know when you sent the videos and mm-hmm. how timely it was how clear was the you know uh, was there any uh, chances that you are join and basically how was the you know transparency of the process yeah so regarding lfx uh, the transparency is not that good i can say that because uh, there is no fixed date like this okay this is the date where you should submit your thing this is the date where you should you know uh, you will get the acceptance letter so it entirely depends on the organization like when they want to review it and uh, the day when when they want you to know the results about it so for example i had applied for these three organizations all right so this one is accepted and this is still application pending it's pending so okay. i no, do not know okay if my uh, proposal is accepted or not yeah. and yeah. even for this so it's like like gsoc has a yeah. structured it's format structured, like, yeah, yeah, exactly this is the day when the results will be announced and yeah. here it's it isn't that structured but again you should apply and yeah. if i got selected then anyone can get selected so yeah, exactly exactly and now you are <laughs> you are a gsoc you know contributor and a gsoc mentor your chances are really high as a candidate chances chances might also be really high but you yeah. know you were on the quite you know because the, i think that lfx is a newer program that than gsoc it started in 19 2019 i think lfx so it has not matured oh. that right now i think so I yeah, think yeah. they would get some reforms recently in you know in upcoming years. But meanwhile, we have some questions from you know our viewers. So, programming with bro ha- is asking what was the difficulty faced in the earlier stage at selecting the organization based on a tech stack. So, okay, I think you already answered that. But let's you know sum it up in yeah. one or two lines again for yeah. yeah. So, with- sure, sure. so my example is uh, completely different like i chose a project with a tech stack which i had zero idea about just uh, out of interest and you know to get to know about the technologies so see i am a living example you did not be a pro at uh, the te- those technologies even if you are interested and you have your basic concepts clear so for example in my case i was very clear with how web development works and how are the different architect architectures so it helped me in uh, this project as well so the uh, languages were different but languages do not matter i feel what matters is the concepts which you have so just give it a try and once you start just get started once you get started you'll find a way that's for sure just get started if you face any difficulty ask to the community and there will be they will be more than happy to help you mm-hmm. so that should yeah. answer it that's it really a good explanation so now kios underscore 012 is asking another question he's asking how to increase our chances of getting selected in the lfx how do they shortlist right. so even so, i do not know how is the process so uh, send the mentor a check for a thousand dollars and your chances <laughs> will increase for sure that's the indian way of doing it yeah that's the indian way of doing it yeah but uh, see, would, if you have a good resume yeah. if you had a good resume and if you show that okay you are really passionate so they also ask the cover letter so if mm. you show that you are really passionate about doing that project and you have the relevant skills so yeah you will get selected there's no issue 
so now there's another question by someone we totally don't know named rahul kinchi i wonder right. who is that so he's asking what are the some best practices to manage time like you are doing mentoring and mentee at lfx like you are a gsoc mentor and an lfx mentee at the same time so like how do you manage it that's a good question yeah that's a very good question mm-hmm. so it depends like you should prioritize your task once you know how to prioritize your task time management becomes very easy so at this time okay this is my priority and i should do this first so once that is completed you go to the uh, task which is having the next priority and once you have done this uh, once you have prepared the list of priorities and you work accordingly so you can manage your time i feel that way yeah you know you have to prioritize in order to complete everything because you have a lot of yeah. tasks at hand and this is something you know personally that i follow like uh, i have no I'm not shouting out to you know any app or things so like there's a microsoft app for to do so like i have this thing in my mind like just do these five tasks in the day and then you're free to do everything you can play video games you can watch soccer you can do anything you want just complete these five tasks anyhow you know uh, complete them all in the morning in the afternoon in the evening whenever you wish but just tick all these tasks before going to bed and you know that really helps me uh, to you know achieve my goals yeah so like there job, is another yeah. question from akshita so she asked that what are some internship slash job search strategies that you would recommend okay job search strategies well if you are you know if you have the achievements in your resume like just we mentioned google summer of code there is lfx so these are all the programs which are standard programs which will make your resume stand out from the crowd so get involved in such programs show, showcase so what is the best way of showcasing your work this is the best way of showcasing your works when you you know participate in such programs so that will make your resume stand out and yeah i mean that's the strategy i mean you can't go to the hr and uh, i mean <laughs> yeah you cannot just give everyone 1000 dollar checks na that yeah, will yeah. make you back corrupt so that's so the you problem. should increase your skill set and then make sure that uh, yeah. you are on the right track okay. yeah, exactly so like uh, you cannot go wrong if you are an you know gsoc uh, contributor and gsoc mentor and an expenty then your resume only you know it passes every system and then you are automatically into the good jobs so like uh, just shot this is a personal question i believe so like uh, do you have you know any plans of you know doing a job or become an open sourcer so like there are a lot of open sourcers in india right now they are you know full time open sourcers they are not looking for any yeah. jobs they work at the wish so like which would you would you like to opt for working for a company you know in a job based scenario or an open mm-hmm. sourcer so at present i am planning to work for a company just to gain the experience how corporates work and how is their system so at present that is my plan in future let's see what oh, yeah. you cannot foresee in the future so which yeah. brings us to our next question from vanj so he's is asking that will contributing to open source uh, is contributing to open source equal to internships for getting job opportunities so like yeah he's yeah. comparing internship with open source exactly. so what's your take on that that's equivalent of any standard internship you take like even at the level of google because see these open source organizations follow the best practices available right there they have their ci cd pipelines and everything they have their test cases documentation and mm-hmm. everything which you can expect from a top product based company mm-hmm. they have mm-hmm. everything about that so if you are contributing to open source it is equivalent to any kind of internship and if you are getting selected for such programs you get even paid a decent amount of yeah. stipend exactly, so exactly. you contributing to open source is like as i said i am rep- repeating this but it's real gold for students like us yeah, for students you know from any t- tier 1 also it's gold for tier 1 students as well because the opportunities that open source provides they are enormous and not even you know uh, ending up to you know gsoc or lfx mentees there are tons of programs out there open source like season of kde and you know outreach yeah. and there are many more programs in which if you take part you know you'll gain a you know a lot of experience and if you are you know uh, going on the you know money aspect also which uh, it's not you know 
okay money is important but learning is i believe more important than money yeah. at this stage for students but even if you go to a start aspect they are you know paying more than your regular internships do and that too for a short amount of time like elephants is 3 months gsoc yeah. is you know i have a large project this time so it's about 3 to 4 months so like they pay you a decent amount of money and the work culture is also super good you work you know when you wish to and there's no you know 9 to 5 like scenario Yeah, but yeah. equally you know working in a company and working in corporate is equally important as well so like once i'll uh, sorry not once uh, yashraj so this brings us to our next question which i believe is very important question is that your experience towards open source is great right so mm-hmm. uh, right now you are mentoring someone so like what do you expect as a mentor from your you know mentee that okay you should do this and sometimes you know there are things that your the mentee might fail to do something he might have yeah. you know some exams or something so like what's your strategy and how have you planned through this you know gsoc period to successfully you know mentor your mentee all okay. right so before answering that question uh, i'll just want to plug my charger to the laptop it's like oh, yeah yeah sure, 10%. sure, sure. Okay, okay okay sorry for that uh, yeah no problem just a second so guys still he's uh, plugging you know charger or into his laptop come on you know show him some support you know uh, go to his social they are linked down in the description you know he has taken out his time from his busy schedule he is a gsoc mentor and lfx mentee so you know show him some support go down in the description you know follow him on github on you know linkedin and whatever socials are mentioned below go give him a follow so that will show you know our support towards him because he is doing such a great job you know sharing his experience with all of us so go down in the description and you know give him a thumb you know follow so that would be really great so he's back finally guys yeah yeah yes raj so the question was regarding like expectations from a mentor yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah so first would be zeal to learn so the mentee should be you know very curious about learning things and uh, contributing about the project so i'll give example of my mentee so like just like me he was like he didn't have any knowledge about elastic search and uh, the cake phd so he came to me and you know discussed with things about the project what are the requirements and how should i start with it so i gave him the resources what he should follow and how will he get started about that and then he eventually you know started contributing to the project and he then got the idea of okay what the project is all about so you can see like zeal to learn is very important then second thing is the mentee should like i know it might sound but a uh, bit offensive but they shouldn't ask questions which are like googleable that is a yeah, big exactly 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 because see these mentors have uh, like they have their work to do in their life yeah they have so, day jobs yeah so just do not ask questions which are like you can easily google and uh, that would just frustrate like imagine yourself being in that place If yeah i mean like are, yeah i've been contributing to organization for a long time like uh, like i am not you know boast about it but i had you know like 50 60 pull requests before i got selected in gsoc so like i was at that time uh, like indirectly not officially i was mentoring many students so like i conducted google meets personally with mm-hmm. students who were you know interested in gsoc so uh, like there is no questions you know there is there are no dumb questions you might know how things work but what i feel from my experience is that even if it takes one week to solve a bug or you know to you know see how something's working you should give it a try because that the feeling that you'll get out, uh, you know after solving that bug and the skills you will gain because googling is an art you cannot we you know underestimate it really that okay oh i'll just google it and i'll find the solution no googling is an art you know getting your answer out of stack overflow is an art your question get you know downloaded very easily and it can get quickly closed you have to you know frame your question in such a way that people you know are you know forced to answer that in a way and you have to you know even go through all the present questions which may not be 100% same but they are really close and you should try to derive your answer from that because that you know shows us that you are really putting in efforts as a you know mentor it shows that the mentee is really putting efforts and he is not you know just uh, transferring his work if I, he had some you know 20 errors he just control c control v sent to mentor so that you know that really yeah. feels that 
uh, you should put in more efforts yes and in the process of researching you that's the real process where you learn mm. when you do mistakes when you try some things they don't work then you do some different things then they start working so this is the main process where you learn things so do, don't just you know rely on uh, mentors to solve your issues they will not spoon feed you so that was a point and next thing is uh, again the proposal should be i mean the project objective should be well discussed with the mentors like what you think about the project what is your approach and so the discussion should be uh, good with your mentors and the proposal should be reviewed before mm -hmm. gso like at least twice from the mentors yeah. okay what is so that way we get to know okay this the project requirements have been met and this is a good proposal and then last thing would be you can like the more you contribute the more you show yeah. your work experience to us and that really helps us to uh, you know differentiate candidates like okay this guy is this guy is capable serious of working. about yeah this is serious of work and that helps us in selecting uh, students so, yeah i think these are three to four things uh, which i think which are important in a mentee okay so like uh, on a lighter note i like to ask that what are your future plans about you know contributing to open source would you like to mentor next year also or you are you know looking uh, trying to explore in different domains at this stage like you would be pretty busy by the next year so like are you looking for any more mlh or any more open source programs or is it like you know getting a you know good job in a good mnc or a corporate so like what's the, you know your future goals for now i'll say i'll start yeah so like for sure i want to get a good job at an mnc yeah. but i also i'll not like completely ignore open source i'll yeah. surely you know if not contributing actively but i'll mentor any other mentees so that they can work upon it and i also i also want to explore different uh, open source projects like currently i am exploring hyperledger so mm. yeah mlj is also very good program so yeah. they also have cool projects so mm. just do not restrict yourself to things just yeah. go there and explore each and everything mm. and i think that would increase your knowledge exponentially mm. so yeah you know chances they are over the top of getting any internship you just walk into the office to the resume and they say you are hired I mean, yeah, but uh, like exactly. it's called DSA. So yeah, that, that also uh, it pains. It pains hearing DSA for open sources. <laughs> uh, because no, but it's fine. I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, you have to do it. Yeah, yeah. For companies, uh, DSA becomes a very easy differentiating factor, like to evaluate you. Mm -hmm. So you have open sources is really good, but you have to you know balance out that as well. Don't yeah, do yeah. you know competitive coding if you don't wish to. But there, yeah. you know, we don't understand that there's difference between competitive coding and DSA. Competitive yes. coding in DSA is like it, they're completely poles apart. Okay, competitive coding requires DSA, but DSA in itself is like theory of you know computer science, how data structures work, how algorithms work. We might not always you know in an open source project work on the core algorithm, but somewhere in the project you know they are being utilized. For sure. Because For sure. I remember when I started contributing, I did not know what a tree is. Okay. and uh, my uh, you know textile it's a tool for static linting in java so what it does is that it uh, takes the java source code makes a abstract syntax tree out of it and you know then does some tree algorithms uh, to you know check the code so i went to the organization <laughs> what a tree is i don't know what a tree is <laughs> so like dsa is really important and yeah yeah apart from you know cp cp is your wish but dsa i think it's a must for you know any student of computer science also yeah yeah that improves your problem solving and logical thinking which is also very important when you are contributing to open source so mm -hmm. you need to do that task in a efficient way so mm -hmm. at that time you know having a good knowledge of dsa will really help you exactly exactly so now yashad this brings us on to our qa session so chat we you know have just yashad for a few more minutes so quickly ask any questions if you have if you have any so like quickly ask him your questions he is you know ready to answer them but uh, because he's really busy a really busy guy i'd say that lfx men dg of mentor it's not easy to take out time for you know uh, doing such a meet and we are really grateful to you you know yashad for that you know helping out you know newcomers into open source which will benefit by this so chat if you have any questions like just drop them you know you know in the live chat and uh, we'll try our best to uh, you know answer it 
let's wait for you know some people to drop some questions I believe it did a Q&A in between also, right? Like there were a couple of questions. So let's see if you know if there are any more because they were asking in between only. They might have asked at initially only and yeah, we'll yeah. save it for the last. Yeah. Let's see how the charts responding. Let's wait for a few more seconds. After that, we'll just wrap it up if there are no more questions from the chat side. Okay, so this is a question from my side as an aspiring LFX mentee and an aspiring GSOC mentor as well. So, uh, like for me, like I'm a, you know, a GSOC contributor as well this year, summer. So like, uh, should I, you know, go, if I get selected for LFX mentee, like, would it be really great if I, you know, do it all at the same time or I should respace them? What do you advise to me for me to do? So look, if you can manage, you can do it. So LFX like says like, it goes like around thrice a year. Okay. Uh, so I think the next term would start from October or something like that. So once you finish your GSOC, you mm -hmm. can try for LFX and uh, to apply for LFX. I think it's not a big task because you did not make any yeah. proposal or some just a resume and cover letter. So mm -hmm. like one or two days, it's sufficient for, you know, the mm -hmm. application process. And uh, yeah, I mean, for GSOC mentorship, I would suggest that just be involved around the organization in some or the other way. Just uh, uh, so resolve the doubts of the students. And mm -hmm. if you get time, you can also resolve some issues. So that way, if you are active in the organization, the organization will surely offer you to mend, like, yeah, mentor. mentor next day. So we have one question from someone we don't know named Rahul. He's asking that as I'm a GSOC student for this year, so what are your suggestions to make my project successful? I think you make the LinkedIn post also in this regard, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the LinkedIn post was just the answer, perfect answer for this question. Yeah. So, yeah. so like, Rahul, uh, uh, like, like, let's let's share in the link. Let's let him do some yeah. hard work. Let's share in the link. Give you know him a follow, and uh, I'll just share your link of that post. I think I have it. So uh, let me just give, give me a second. That was a really, you know, I read that post. It was a really informative post. Like uh, being a first time contributor, it really gives you insight, like what to do, what not to do, because people may get lousy, you know, oh, now I've got selected. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I can, you know, now uh, you just work harder to the selection and then you are, you know, really casual. So I think that shouldn't be the case and you should keep, you know, uh, your race on the pedal so that yeah. your journey can go on in open source domain okay. so no one is out there are uh, mm -hmm. evaluations like there are two evaluations when you will yeah. get your stipend and uh, you will successfully gsoc you will successfully complete gsoc only when you pass mm -hmm. in these uh, evaluations yeah, so don't exactly. just you know take things for granted you have to work exactly yeah exactly so uh, Raul, uh, don't worry. We'll share you the link uh, with this, uh, maybe in the description later for you know, uh, because that's a really good question. And because uh, in the description it would be better if the link is in the description. We'll share it. Don't worry. I'm not able to find it right now. To sum up, if you want, <laughs> I worry. can share it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I went through a profile yeah. and uh, somehow that post is not appearing. Yeah. So do yeah, you want so, me to repeat those points for uh, nah, 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 it would be sufficient you know if you nah, nah, let them work harder for you know getting yeah, some yeah. answers so <laughs> give him a follow on linkedin guys that that's really mandatory for you to you know view that post yeah i can see some connection requests at my side so <laughs> yeah so you know you search i'll try to answer this question you know Raul is asking you has some problem with me. <laughs> I guess that's why he doesn't know me. Oh, Rahul, that's really sad. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't, yeah. Do you know anyone named Rahul? I don't remember. So, who's Rahul, Rahul like? Rahul uh, Dravid. We don't know. Uh, yeah, Rahul Dravid. Yeah, Rahul yeah Dravid. I know Dravid. Like, who's yeah. this guy, you know, bothering us? Get him out of the chat. <laughs> so, there's a, uh, one more question from Akshita. A little out of context question. 
but like what's the most important leadership lesson you have learned and how it is valuable that's a really good question all right oh, that's deep so yeah some pretty uh, you know intelligent crowd yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so leadership lesson so leadership lesson would be just remember that at one stage you were also a mentee all right so just don't uh, bash at uh, the mentee if you are uh, you know if that mentee is not performing well you are expected to guide that mentee to uh, make that project very successful so that was a uh, leadership lesson which i'll take with me yeah. and next thing would be uh just you, you know you have to remove some time from your schedule uh, to help out these uh, mentees and that way you are contrib- giving back to the community so mm-hmm. yeah i think that's pretty much it yeah and also you know there's a saying in corporate they say that be the senior you wish that you had when you were a junior so yeah. like that uh, sums up be the- being that yeah being that you know when if you felt something wrong that your senior did to you do not you know just uh, go around the clock and do that to your junior no nah, don't do yeah, that yeah. be you know the senior that you wish you yeah. know your senior was so exactly. that's a really really good that's a good question akshita you know thanks for asking that so i think that brings us to the end of session now uh, there are no more questions as such so it was a pleasure talking to you thank you so much for you know taking time out of your schedule and talking with us we really appreciate it and you know guys go down the description and give your shadow for on all his handles get her linkedin twitter all of those handles you know really it was really really informative session from your side because the things that i have known from you that even you know being a contributor this year and this is for you know upcoming gso contributors i also learned a lot of new things so the newcomers will definitely learn a lot of new things so thank you again rashad for doing this yeah, yeah. with that this brings us to the end of the episode 3 of the open source cafe podcast with me we had yashraj who's a you know uh, gsoc contributor 2021 cdli gsoc mentor this year with the same organization and also an lfx mentee so guys that was it from our side yashraj would you like to add anything yeah yeah so it was a pleasure talking with you whom i am really looking forward to such podcasts to share knowledge about these things because people aren't aware of such things and you know these are really great things which you should try in your student life because these will really enhance your knowledge to the next level and mm-hmm. final thing would be now go and work because yeah, listening exactly. to podcast would wouldn't help you go anywhere it's mm-hmm. your efforts which will you know help you to achieve your goals yeah. so go and work now that's your time yeah. to work like uh, lens to wall said that that talk is chief show me the code so like guys these podcasts are only for you know getting to help you started if you have some basic doubts but in the end of the day you have to you know put your hands on the keyboard and type code in order to get selected into any program it's not yeah. just like uh, you would uh, do certain things he actually really you know all of the you know mentors contributors everybody they work really hard and you know this is just like what this sum up in an hour but the actual experience it's really deep and it yes. a lot of hard work is in, involved so hard work is a must and you know hard work and determination it's a must for any program may it be you know a personal project or any open source so ha- work hard guys and with that we are ending this episode please guys take care take care ashraj bye bro thank you bye bye